Hello and all. welcome back to the PRL podcast, like always. We will be going over last week's race as well as covering some of the events um, that happened in both divisions, as well as doing our best to predict what could possibly happen at the Spanish Grand Prix that will be happening tomorrow at 7pm. And actually, interestingly, D2 do a full qualifying. Oh no, it's not even the Spanish Grand Prix, it's the Austrian Grand Prix. Um, but yeah, this week, um, you might have heard him already, but we are missing Gary and Mitch. But thankfully, Mark is on hand to help me out. So what's what's going on, Mark? All good. I didn't want to interrupt you in your flow. But, oh, uh, I completely yeah. messed up, didn't I? <laughs> <laughs> right, we, so... Um, we, should, we should persevere. Yeah, we will persevere. Um, everyone makes mistakes. <laughs> Right, so let me get the results. It was a, it was an interesting Baku Grand Prix. Um, so the qualifying results are as follows. Harry got first with a crack in lap. I believe he got slipstream from my teammate, which is a, an interesting scenario. Um, and then the reserve driver, Louis, got second, so fair play to him. Rick got third. Decky got fourth, uh, followed by his Mercedes teammate, Jume, in fifth. Michael got 6th, Falcon got 7th, Neo got 8th, Jari got 9th, the new reserve driver Jeff got 10th, Kalek who's recently moved from D2 to D1 got 11th, Simside Danger with his best qualifying of the season in 12th, myself in 13th, not not ideal, Um, and then Killer in 14th, Mitch, my teammate in 15th, um, Adam, or F1 Racer, in 16th, Owen in 17th, Agony in 18th, and Gary in his usual spot, holding the back of the grid up. Um, so yeah, the qualifying um, the qualifying was interesting really. Um, there was quite a lot of FPS lag, I don't know what it was like in D2, but it was not nice in D1. But yeah, what came from it was this like phenomenal qualifying lag. Like, I haven't compared to other leagues, but from pole, which was a 39.4, to 15th, which was a 40.2. A 40.2 in a lot of leagues would get you on the front row or in the top five. But in our Division 1, it'll get you 15th on the grid. I don't know how that happened. So I was shocked to see myself back in 13th. I thought I'd done a decent banker lap, but obviously obviously not good enough um, but yeah um, that was interesting I, I, I can't believe how close that was I, I've seen the um, oh it was insane the from the two guys and actually it was genuinely I don't really watch esports stuff or stuff that doesn't directly involve me but and obviously I do watch some of the D1 stuff of course um, but that actually gripped me <laughs> yeah <laughs> it was incredible really yeah um, it like two tenths separated eight drivers that's literally one corner could get you from eighth but you mess it up you're in 15th but i mean that's exactly what you want to see from call you want to see this uh incredibly close qualifying where it really piles on the pressure i mean the only stat the standouts from that is rick had a, a great qualifying in third he's a specialist around street circuits i'm sure of it um, and Kalik did himself proud getting 11th place. Um, he did a great lap. Um, I think he was somewhat shocked to see himself in 11th with a 40.0, I believe, is what he got. Um, and so, yeah, that moves us on to the race, of which the results are a bit jumbled up. So I'm, I do apologize if I uh, incorrectly give you a position. Um, but I'll do my best to remember what happened. So in first place, um, it was a dry race. Decky got first, so that's his first win of the season. So I'm sure he was excited about that. Rick got second. Beautiful drive from him. And then third, we have X Jess Revenge, the new reserve driver. So he will be elated with that result. Jari got fourth. Uh, Doom got fifth. Uh, Gary... We'll come on to this. Gary got sixth. Um, he was probably doing his Irish jig after that race. <laughs> uh, seventh was Michael, so not a great result for him. Eighth was me. Um, we don't talk about that. Ninth was actually... I'm not sure if we've promoted Calic to that, but in the race it was... Um, 
Falcon, and then tenth was Calic, and then from eleventh down, I believe all these drivers did not finish. Some of them left their car in the race by rage quitting, um, but I think it was a uh, killer in eleventh, the McLaren of Simside Danger in twelfth, Agony got thirteenth. Um, one second. Fourteenth was Louis. God knows what happened to him. 15th, Neo. Uh, 16th was Harry. 17th was Owen. 18th was Adam. And last place, where he belongs, was my teammate. <laughs> um, so, yeah, I'm not sure how much you saw of that race, Mark. But it was an interesting one. I mean, the, the kind of, like, the finishing positions reversed. So everyone who's usually at the top, like Falcon, Michael, Mitch, like all your usual front runners either DNF'd or came at the back of the top 10 and then you've got Rick who had a phenomenal drive so much credit to him he was genuinely on pace with the leaders I believe he had a wing change which is why he was a bit behind Decky but a oh, wow. solid solid race for him I, I mean this in the nicest way possible I really hope that that does not continue because um, you are my well I don't even think you're on my rival anymore he's got so many more points than me I think I don't even know who my rival is. I'm worried to say it might be Gary, which is uh, they're not the words I wanted to come out of my mouth during this podcast. Um, it's, it's it's so difficult because I watched that race and I remember thinking when I saw the Baku track announced in actual real life F1, I thought that looks terrible. <laughs> every F1 race I've ever watched around it, every. Like F1 game race I've seen around it it's been brilliant it's actually been it's such a challenge and I think seeing the amount of people that binned it in the castle or people oh, yeah, Mitch well. yeah, yeah Mitch I did see that one that was that was quite tough it was odd for Mitch because he's a Monaco specialist and then bins it in the castle so it just shows how demanding that is doesn't it I guess it's a weird track and I think it's it's so nice to see people do well in tracks that perhaps it's one of their best chances to do well rather than Spa or you know Suzuka or something. I think it's such a weird little track. It is. It up so many non anomalies. It's, it's quite nice seeing some of the results. I don't know Rick personally at all, but he's a great guy. <laughs> I, yeah, and I think just just from what I can like gather seeing someone like that do well around there is is great for the league so no it was great to see him rick is one of those drivers you can't not get on with him he's such a nice guy he's one of the people that you actually really want to see get the result he wants um but moving off those results jeff the new reserve driver i didn't think he would get a podium this entire season and he's already proven me wrong and i I had the honour of teaming with him on 2016 in another league and he's a, a very hard racer and I think he's going to really enjoy this league and I hope people enjoy racing him. Um, he's hard but he is also fair most of the time um, and he's fast so that's always good. Um, but we had Jari. Jari has had a string of bad results who he might blame for other people but for whatever reason he has not had good results and he did well to get fourth place kept it clean for most of the race and uh, this is a person I want to talk about I want to talk about Jume Jume mm. I'm certain could be winning the championship at this point he has been in so many commanding positions to do well I think he qualified fifth and he was in uh, he got wing damage very early on but I think he could have probably got third or second but he just really Seems just, he seems just bottle every time he's at the front he was at the front in Spain he was in first and he spun so June needs to um, try and change that I have actually spoke to him today in fact and he is going through some exams so I believe he's not practicing as much which could explain a couple of uh, errors in his race um, so I hope his exams go well um, but yeah, yeah overall oh go on go on I think you have to think of with June as well is that he didn't really play much of last uh, last season, did he? That's very so, true, actually. It's very true. He's kind he's of like a... End. He missed out on some data, hasn't he? Yeah, and the sharp end of things, if you miss... It's not necessarily 
his quickness. I'm, he's not going to lose that, but I think it's the racing aspect of things. You know, ten laps in, you've got a two-second lead. Those kind of things, if you haven't done it for three or four months, they might actually turn out to be a lot harder than, you, than you'd anticipate if you do it every week. So, Definitely, yeah. I mean, he's, he's still actually got quite a bit of points this season, but I think he's a bit like uh, the Hasses in real life. I think he could have more points. But you win some, you lose some. I think everyone could probably have a bit more points than what they've got. But yeah, yeah overall, it was a good race. I think the moral of the story was to keep it clean. Harry and Louis, or Lewis, were winning, and they were one and two the entire race, I believe. And then both yeah. of them crashed, and that was no point scored for either of them. So I don't, yeah. I don't entirely know how they crashed. I think Lewis crashed, I and then Harry hit the back of him. I think. Yeah. I saw that to Arte and. Oh, you just a lagged a little. If you want to say that again. Oh. So kudos to RJ and and the other chap who does the. Um, oh, Cliffy, yeah. Um, I tell you what, they they did a really good job of describing the action as well. Um, but I saw Louis and Harry, and Harry is just like the um, for any football aficionados here, he's like there's Latan Ibrahimovic in there. <laughs> he damaged his wing. It didn't seem that bad. And he just retired. And just retired. He went, no, I'm not going to come first. Don't fancy this. And it that is left. Harry. That. To be honest, he's very he's got work on it. He's horrendous at controlling his emotions. And he was in second place, he could have pitted and he could have still had probably a podium out of it. But yeah. just didn't keep his cool and I mean that it's not what you want to see. You don't really want to see drivers retiring when they get damaged. I think if that was the case, I think we would have only had a two drivers finishing the race. So I'm glad that's yeah. not the case. But yeah, hopefully, um, he doesn't do that again. It's a bit. It was a bit odd because he's carried on in uh, some other some of the other races where he's had damage. So it was a bit odd that he retired from second. But I imagine he was not happy with uh, what happened, uh, understandably. But yeah, back to what you said. Cliffy and RJ did a phenomenal job. Their first time commentating as a duo, as it would be, and they did. I thought they did it really well. Um, so I'm looking yeah. forward to the rest of their commentaries in the season yeah but, and I hope Arde doesn't forget forget his D2 friends oh well. yeah he actually gave a shout out to D2 he said you're all very quick so I'm not sure if anyone oh. from D2 has uh, watched it all but yeah RJ gave a lot of credit he said a lot of D2 were very fast as he raced them in his uh, what would be season 15 so yeah props yeah. to RJ for shouting them out um, always good to see but yeah, I think that rounds it out. I think that's... Oh, I guess we could say congrats to Gary. He doesn't usually find himself that far up the uh, finishing <laughs> order. I mean, recently, I've got to give him props. He's honestly... His pace has just gone up like half a second. He was genuinely had very good pace in uh, Baku and he kept it clean. So props to him. Not many drivers did. And... I yeah. know in Austria oh. he's actually also, he's, he's I'm not sure if you've seen his time trial time but it's a 5.0 he's ahead what? of like Cara Michael like I thought it was 5.4 last no time he's blind. he's done another lap obviously because he sent me a picture and I hope he's not that fast I'm gonna be I thought I was fast for Austria but maybe I'm not if everyone else is <laughs> someone send him a drug test <laughs> see if he's uh, tampered with himself but he's he's actually messaged me and actually I said is there any words obviously he's not here tonight I said is there any words you want to say on your behalf and he um, he said that me and Rick are the masters of Baku and uh, no one is better than us look at Austria TT because I'm a god <laughs> the words <laughs> I like the confidence. I always like it when someone backs themselves, especially if they're not necessarily where they back themselves. Like, I think I false back myself. I'm nowhere near where I pretend I want to be. But um, it's great to see a bit of confidence in a driver, I think. So, yeah, props, yeah. Gary. Um, but, yeah, I think that wraps us up. Um, so we will now 
move on to the quick fire questions where we do have a divi- at least one division one driver who you will be hearing shortly so yeah we'll catch you on the other side right on to the quick fire questions this week we are i guess honored to be joined by the driver leading the division one table falcon how are you doing Good, thank you. Just come out of a traumatic experience, but should be uh, all good to go for the quick fire questions. I wouldn't miss this for the life of me. <laughs> <laughs> well, that is good to hear. Let's get underway. So you know how this works then. You're going to give a driver's name as an answer, and you'll have ten questions. And you can elaborate on any of the ones you want to. Okay, do I have any lifelines, or...? No, you cannot phone a friend, you cannot 50-50, this is down to you, okay? No asking the audience, son? No, no, fortunately. Right, Right, let's get this underway. Who is the best driver on the grid? Oh, gosh, um, the pressure, uh, me all the way. Ooh, I love, I like that. I'm joking. Uh, yeah. No, uh, I'd go probably. I'll go with Mitch. Okay, okay. Um, who is the most annoying driver on track? Uh, Decky. <laughs> That's not a surprise. Who is the most underrated driver on the grid? Um. Oh gosh. Um. Let's go. I'm going to get Michael, actually. Okay, do you want to tell us yeah, anything? I think he's um, very consistent, uh, and I think his lag and internet connection kind of shadows over his actual That's true, to be fair, yeah. yeah. I mean, if you look at last season especially, he's, he really did challenge the likes of Decky and Cara throughout the two championship rivals, so yeah, I'd go with them, actually. Oh, that's a good answer. Um, who is the most overrated driver on the grid? Jackie. <laughs> Any reason? Snap. Uh, very arrogant. Doesn't really consider anything else. Overall, <laughs> pretty shitty driver. Alright, uh, moving oh, on. Other than that, he's alright. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, moving on, so um, if you were an eSports manager, okay, um, and you had to pick two PLL drivers for your team to coach, which drivers you would you pick? But you've got to imagine everyone is the ability they are now, but they're all on a wheel, so they're all viable for this like simulator role. So if I pick two drivers from uh, Division 1, uh, I'd probably go with Mitch and Michael. Mm. Um, which PRL driver makes you laugh the most? Uh, Decky, because I saw his face. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> Alright, uh, that has just uh, fired up the rivalry <laughs> a little bit more. Well, I mean... <laughs> um, right, so I think we've pr- probably guessed your answer to this one. Decky or Harry? Ah, uh, Harry. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> you tra- you trapped on a desert island with one driver. Who would you pick? Oh, Decky all the way. <laughs> Why? Decky, what? Yeah, Decky, what a lad, because I could murder him and eat him. Oh my <laughs> god! <laughs> Alright, this just went PG real fast. Um, right. Your penultimate question, um, you get, oh, I think we can guess your answer to this one actually. You get to ruin one person's race and they know it's intentional. Whose race do you ruin? Um, I wouldn't ruin anyone's race intentionally, but if I really had to, you know, if there was life or death, it probably would be Decky. If it, okay, if you, could, if you couldn't say Decky, who would you say? Um... I'd say probably at this stage of the championship, like the Mitch and Michael. Okay, uh, okay, I like your thinking behind that, to be fair. I like your thinking. Um. Cool. Um, 
Who would you least want to team with? You can give two answers to this one. Yeah, because um, I think we know one of them. <laughs> I'll probably go with Mitch. Uh, Ooh, Mitch? Well. How yeah, come? I think very equal pace, and I think we could uh, fire up the rivalry. Okay, okay. And obviously what? Decky. <laughs> yeah, I think I think we knew that one. Um, so yeah, thanks Falcon for coming on. Uh, pleasure to have you on. I'm sure everyone will love your answers. Um, do you have any messages for anyone who's listening? Oh, uh, didn't really think so. Just uh, no, I think I'm all good. I don't think I'll uh, write into Ducky anymore. So <laughs> got it. That's fair enough. That's fair enough. So yeah, um, thanks Falcon. I wish you all the best in Austria. Um, I hope you're not involved in any controversy and um, hope you get the result you want. So yeah, um, cheers for coming on Falcon. Thank you, it's been an absolute pleasure. Cracking, cheers for Right, on to our second guest of the three that we have for the quickfire questions. It is uh, not a driver, it is our commentator, our lovely commentator Cliffy. How are you doing Cliffy? Uh, I'm fine, thank you. How are you? Yeah, I'm not too bad. Right, so I've told you what you need to expect, and everyone watching will know what you need to expect, hopefully. So, yeah, let's dive into these questions. Your first question is, who is the best driver on the grid? Falcon. Okay. Ooh. Who's the most underrated driver on the grid? Flair. Hmm. Who is the most overrated driver on the grid? <laughs> um, oh, I'd say, um, I'd say Michael. Okay. Uh, which driver do you most enjoy spectating? <sighs> Max. Any reason? Um, well, he normally bottles quality, so it's kind of nice to see Battle him make up the, well. Yeah. So, yeah. Mm. Nope, fair enough. Um, right, if you were in the league as a driver, which driver would you most be like off this season? Um, this season, I'd say maybe Decky. Oh, okay. I'd say maybe because he's been quite unlucky and... You know, I'm quite lucky in my races, so I'd, I'd have to go with Decky. Oh, fair, fair. You sh D2, you'd be Macca on that basis. <laughs> um, <laughs> if you if you were in the league, who would you most want to team with? Ooh, um, oh my God, I don't I don't know. There are a few people I'd like to. I was going to say, but... tell me, there's at least one person <laughs> that you could team oh, with. Yeah. Okay, I just thought my I'd go with Louis. I know I know he's a reserve, but yeah, no, that's fine. That's fine. Um, I'd go with Louis purely because we've never been teammates in any oh, league. Oh, fair. Him, so You're in quite a lot of leagues nice. with him, aren't you? Uh, I've been I think two or three I think with him. So it'd be nice to be teammates with him, I guess. Oh, fair enough. Um, right. Uh, one second. Right, so who is the biggest bottle job in Division 1? Oh, God. <laughs> There's so many. <laughs> Can I... I'm going to go with Flair. Okay. Well, purely... Like, I know you're going to say why, so I'm just going to give reason anyway. Purely because I know he's got the pace to, to fight with the big boys, but he hasn't shown it yet. So I'm, I'm just going to say Flair. Well, fair enough. Hmm. Who would you support if you had to? If you could, if you could drop your neutral commentator kind of vibe, <laughs> who would you support? Um. Oh, again, this is this is very hard. Um, <laughs> I really don't know. See, there, obviously, I know a lot of people in in the league, and I'm quite good friends with mostly everyone here. So, if again, I'd have to, to go. Pick. There. I'd, I'd go with Max again, just because, you know, he's actually in the league and a full-time driver, so I'd have to go with Max. 
Fair see, enough. See, I thought you, I thought you was gonna say Gary because you, you two in the <laughs> last race were absolutely. Uh, yeah, no, nice. yeah. I quite like Gary. Gary. Gary, Gary's a Gary's a nice guy. Gary's like you know realistic sort of thing. He isn't you know. Oh, I'm gonna be top five. Like he knows he's gonna yeah, get yeah. back. So I quite like Gary for that sense. Yeah, he knows he's terrible, but he, he loves it. <laughs> <time. laughs> Basically, right. yeah, I guess. <laughs> so your final question of the nine: um, Who would you most like to see get a podium? Who would you be happiest to see get a podium? Uh, I'd, uh, I'd say maybe you, Smithy. To be fair. Oh. Oh. I mean, you don't need to worry about me getting one. It's not going to happen anytime soon. <laughs> No, but like you know, it, <laughs> like all the races that have happened, you've been sort of unlucky, and you know it's not as if you just get rid of the damage and give up. You literally carry on. Yeah, that's true. Until so. the end. Go a bit. So I'd like to see. Yeah, I'd, I'd like to see you get a podium. Oh, thanks, Duffy. I hope I hope I can. <laughs> <laughs> right. So that finishes your questions. Is there any? message you want to say to the drivers maybe what track you're looking forward to or anything like that um i mean not so much what track i'm looking forward to just you know thanks you know for the warm welcome that i got really i mean when i done abu dhabi i wasn't expecting um the full time to like it. <laughs> yeah i wasn't expecting everyone to like my commentary you know because obviously when you get a new commentator in it's sort of oh i don't really like him or oh, he's yeah, not that yeah. good but yeah the warm welcome that I've received since is it's been incredible. So I just want to thank everyone that does, you know, watch the streams or, you know, supports it in any way, shape or form, you know. So yeah, I just want to thank everyone for that really. No, that's great. You you you're, you're very good at, at comparing it to the real world F one scenario as well. Your your Baku commentary along with RJ's uh, about the similarities between real life Baku and that race that genuinely brought a smile to my face. I, I, you're genuinely a credit to the league, my man. Oh, cheers, man. Thank you for the kind words. <laughs> <laughs> well, I'm glad we've uh, all enjoyed that. That was uh, all your questions, and I'm glad you came on to do the the little segment. So, yeah, I wish you... Well, you're not a driver, but I hope you enjoy commentating over Austria tomorrow. Um, so, yeah, cheers for joining us, Cliffy. Yeah, thank you, man. I'm sure we'll enjoy commentating on with you guys in a bit. No problem. See you later. Cheers, See you later. Bye. Right, on to our third guest. Um, it is a driver and a host of the podcast who hasn't been with us, but he has got back in time to be here. Gary, or G-Dog, as I like to call you, yes, how are you doing? On, lads? Good, good I to know, hear. So, obviously, you know the ins and outs, you know exactly how this works. Yeah. So, we will dive right into your questions. Your first question of the day is, who is the best driver on the grid? Um, Decky. Okay. Who is the most annoying driver on track? Um, Mitch. You know, I'm never around him. He's just... <laughs> He's just annoying. <laughs> Um, who is the most underrated driver on the grid? Um, um oh Jesus, the hard one. Uh, killer. Okay. Which PRL driver makes you laugh the most? Besides myself, um. <laughs> Probably Sam. Oh, cheers, Gary. Oh, um, right. <laughs> so uh, you're a manager of an esports team. I don't know how you've got into this position, but you are. And um, <laughs> oh, Jesus. you yes, have bitch. to pick two drivers on the PRL grid, and you're pretending all of them are on the wheel, so they all fit the simulator build. Yeah. Which drivers would you pick, and why would you pick them? Oh. Um, I'd pick Decky because man knows how to win to do anything to win. <laughs> you want. And I'd pick hmm, Neil. Okay, fair because enough. Because I just love Neil. <laughs> so, yeah, two Germans. 
Why not? It's a good combo. <laughs> Sounds like a sitcom, two Germans and one Irishman. <laughs> <laughs> You're trapped on a desert island with one driver. Who would you pick? Oh god, not Adam anyway. <laughs> we haven't asked um, who you wouldn't pick, we want to know who you'd pick. Oh jeez. trying to think now. Um... Say Rick, not because he picked me, but why would you I have Rick? Um, Can you get along with him? I get along with him, and I say he'd be good crack. Ah, oh, fair enough. Yeah. No bit bant. Um, yep. right. So, sim side danger or own HVB? Um, own. Okay. Get to ruin one person's race, and you and they know it's intentional. <laughs> Who race do you ruin? Adams. <laughs> that was a very quick answer. <laughs> How would you do it? Um, well, I'm really T bone and straight into T one. Do whatever I have to do. Get the job done. Your monster chicane just straight into him. Like, well. <laughs> oh yes, oh yes. Or just yeah, just blow him up by any means possible. Right, so your final question, I think. Um, who would you least want to team with? Um, uh, d d d d we won the quick guys anyway. Um, so probably me. Nah, not you. <laughs> uh, people up there, like maybe Falcon or. I don't want to say Decky again because it's probably sad for every answer, but uh, yeah, Decky because they'd expect quite a lot and ah, uh, they don't enough. get quite, they don't get a lot from a driver like me. So oh, don't put yeah. yourself down, Gary. <laughs> I believe you are one of the fastest people around Austria. So yes, no TC boys, watch out. <laughs> Spinning sober coming soon. Right, so I think that um wraps up your questions. Cheers for answering them, of course. Um, do you have any messages for any of the drivers? Um, I do actually, yeah. Um, Adam, when are you going to score a point? Oh, we we could be waiting <laughs> until uh, season 17. Uh, we could be waiting a while. D3. <laughs> <laughs> um, I was going to ask you actually, as a sub question, when you're in D2 next year, who are you going to team with? Oh! <laughs> <laughs> Not you after that question. <laughs> um, With the way it's know, going, I think you'll in. still be on in D1. Your pace these last few races has been oh, no, I was gonna say, phenomenal. This question would have been a lot a lot better two weeks ago. Yeah, a couple now of weeks does. ago. <laughs> yeah. It doesn't hold any validity, does it? But no, no, in all seriousness, if you had to team with someone in D2, who would you team with? Um, I'd pick someone slower than me, so yeah, Mark, I'd pick you. <laughs> 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 oh, fair enough. Well, cheers, Gary, for coming on. Pleasure oh, to have you on lads. and hear your voice. Um, wish you all the best in Austria as long as you don't beat me, because really <laughs> don't want to see the back end of that Sauber. Um, so yeah, we'll catch you later. See you, lads. Cheers, Gary. And now on to the uh, D2 Azerbaijan section uh which i will obviously be running as the d2 correspondent um <laughs> but yeah no it was a uh very pretty non-eventful quality really um v5 in first which i think a lot of us suspected um really good lap 140.8 uh followed not that far away from naluigi uh army in third uh, a slightly surprising name actually in, in especially at the time with with Car Cannon in fourth, um, a brand new driver. Uh, I believe he's a reserve at the moment, but a really nice chap who was in the Haas. Um, so I'm always going to be a fan of him. But Gaz Spook <laughs> in the in, in fifth place, um, myself in sixth, uh, Tigby in seventh, Steve O in eighth, Stein. Uh, in, in ninth, Hammers in tenth, uh, quite a lowly position for some 
some kind of a stalwarts if we like, which was 11th in, for Robert, uh, 12th for Dave, Dave even, 13th for Maka, and if we go a little bit further down the grid, you've got Yugi in 14th, Bellin in 15th, Emperor in 16th, Ibo in 17th, and Pomoy in 18th. Oh, that was a good turnout, 18 drivers. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, it, was, uh, it was quite competitive, but everyone kind of came by and large, I think, where everyone was expecting. There was quite yeah. a few gaps as well. Um, but yeah, no, the race was... A bit of a shout-out to D2 here, because we've given, you know, Montreal was probably our worst moment in the sense of the amount of penalties and how many people got lapped, yeah. etc. But yeah, we, we crashed a lot less than the D1 guys, I'll tell you that for sure. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I'd have been impressed if you had crashed more, to be honest. There was some there was some carnage in D1, but D2, we've, we've redeemed ourselves. You've listened to my rallying call. <laughs> so there we go. Um, but no, V5, um, obviously, streets ahead of around here anyway of everyone else did a very very good win um probably i can imagine yeah no he did he got the fastest lap just absolutely killer for v5 uh, and puts him back in the title contention especially with Kalek, who did very well obviously in uh, in, in his race in, in d1 but it opens the title up a lot more so I think V5 really put a stamp on it today. Yeah, that's good to um, see. Yeah, and no, absolutely. We, I think he's. It's nice to see people that are quick being quick. And I think that you know that that kind of sums it up. Um, at Army in second again, you know it's it's looking a little bit like the uh, the D2 before Yari, so to speak. <laughs> <laughs> um, V5 and Army, you know, an Army. I spoke to V5. Um, Army was catching V5 a lot after the stop. In the oh, that's interesting. Yeah, on the softs, Army was really quick, and and, v, and V5 was saying, "Don't think I could hold him off for, for more, you know another another five or six laps." So nice to see Army battling back as well because he's had some trouble this this season. Um, on to Carl Cannon, third, first PRL podium. Props to him. Carl Cannon. It's always nice yeah. getting that milestone. Yeah, absolutely. It, it must be fantastic. I can't really relate. Um, <laughs> he he's done. He did really well in the race. Qualified well. Obviously qualified in fourth, I believe. Yep. Come third, just just really kept it clean. Um, yeah, big props to him. Naluigi in fourth. Um, I need to highlight something for Naluigi. Um, he had a neutral setup because we had to restart. Oh, restart. fair if he got fourth then. I hate that default setup. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. And I think he will probably be gutted around there because. I suspect he would have, you know, he finished. He's finished 39 seconds behind. Maybe it's difficult to judge because the top two were so far ahead. I mean, Army was only four seconds behind B5, but I think he would have probably got a podium. You know, I'm not taking anything away from Carl Cannon. You have to do what you got to do. You can only beat what's in front of you. But I think Naluigi would have been gutted. Um, yeah. Onto the guy that couldn't beat the guy with the default setup, which was me. <laughs> good finish for you though. Fifth's good. Yeah, it's kind of annoying that it's good because it's kind of where I like kind of aim. But I went around that track and I realised I couldn't beat anyone ahead of me, and I couldn't lose to anyone behind. <laughs> You're yeah. a no man's so, land. Yeah, it was the shortest highlight reel I've ever had in my life. But <laughs> Dave. Dave kept me really honest because Dave was behind me. Um, 
after the stops, he went on the reverse strategy, which is obviously classic Dave. That is Dave in a nutshell. <laughs> and after he came out, the gap was four seconds. He pretty much stayed. I was quite quick on the the other compound, but you know, it was it was he was very he was running me very honest, which was really annoying because round here. <laughs> You don't want you pressure, are. do you? <laughs> oh, you do not want any pressure at all. And, um, yeah, fair play today. Um, driver of the day for me was Hammers um, in seventh because if you watch the video, Stein around the first DRS, what's the corner? It's a left-hand corner. I, f I forget the corner number or the name. What, uh, after the, the first DRS straight? Yeah, after the main straight, you've got the back straight, and then you've got that left-hander. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Turn of three, that'd be. Yeah. Yeah, well, well, Stein basically collected hammers into the corner on, like, lap two. Oh, that's unlucky. And it was just... It was probably the most brutal collection, because Stein come off, like, coming up roses, and hammers ended up with... The most dirty wing you'll ever see. <laughs> <laughs> that's, that is unfortunate. Yeah, no, absolutely. And, and Hammers took his medicine and still managed to come seventh. And around here, I have to say that, it, it, you know, not many people made mistakes. So, yeah. you know, 22, 23 seconds around here is actually a lot. So for him to actually come, come seventh. It was a massive achievement, so props to Hammers. James, I keep calling him Hammers, I'm really sorry. <laughs> Spices up his name. <laughs> this Spanish contingent. Um, Steve in eighth. Yeah, uh, he too stopped as well. I think he had a bit of a problem. But he was very much pressuring the fourth and fifth kind of places. But again, you know, I think if you keep it clean around here, it's kind of a testament to where Steve O's come. Is that if he'd have actually kept it clean, he'd have been he'd, he'd have been okay. But had a problem. Um, Robert Sum in ninth. Disappointing for Robert. Again, he had an, another issue, which is which is a shame because he's been on a real good, rich reign of form. So hopefully he picks it back up in Oz. Um, we in... Yeah, weird one for Tigaby. He actually stacked it into the castle. I uh, see so he's which... done the three stop. Suboptimal, yeah. as you would say. Suboptimal. <laughs> Sub Suboptimal. Uh, he stacked it. He was in front of me. He was obviously feeling the pressure of uh, old school. <laughs> <laughs> <Yeah. laughs> no, but he, I think his ABS basically just failed. Because he was—he doesn't use ABS. I oh, fair enough. Just trailing to, you know, the first bit, the back end of the first bit. <laughs> and uh, yeah, I was quite relieved because Tom's, Tom's so difficult when he's in a vein. I think this is part of his frustration generally with the league is that he calls people out. And, I'm quick. I'm better than you. Blah blah blah. But they just backfires. <laughs> No, but he's quick, and I think those those things with you know the no ABS when he talks about how quick he is with no assists, probably right. But when you're gonna, if you're not good enough to use no AB, no ABS, don't use it. Yeah, I think is the, no, that's fair enough. But yeah, so for him to grab tenth off that, I couldn't believe it. I I, I thought he'd ruined one of his wheels and been out. Um. 11th for Bellon. Really difficult driver to predict, actually, because sometimes he's really quick around certain tracks, but not today. Um, Ibo in 12th. Emperor in 13th. These these guys all finished. Emperor was two laps down. Emperor seems to be getting slower. I hope he doesn't mind me saying, but... <laughs> I hope he doesn't as well. <laughs> well, he used to be quite, used to be quite quick. Um, don't know what's going on there, but Stein in 14th, he finished as well. Yugi in 15th, really unusual actually. Yugi's quite a quick guy. 
but he seems to blow up at certain points. I don't really know. I think he's he's quite a good good pick for for the future. Uh, Gaz in sixteenth, really disappointing. He qualified fifth. Um, he bottled it in one of the corners. I hate to say bottle because it's not really fair. It's one of his first. Ra- yeah. It's literally his first race ever in the league. He was so nervous. Well, his pace was good. He, if he qualified fifth, he's obviously got a bit of pace, hasn't he? So he's gonna get rapid once he once he like dials into league racing and the pressure and that sort of things. I think he's gonna do really well. Um, for Moy, the seventeenth, Maka decided to to bin it. But he, before he didn't one. even set a lap <laughs> I oh. feel bad for him nothing seems to be going his way but surely if you didn't set a lap I can't imagine that being someone else's fault but I could be wrong I don't know I don't know but he's so quick and he needs to he's like the Harry Wild. of D2 he just can't finish yeah I just almost feel like he needs to calm it down I feel like if because he's so quick off the start, and that's not he doesn't get in trouble off the start actually. But I almost feel like if he gets through the first five laps, just no matter where you're going to be, settle down. Be intent. Be intent. Who cares? You're probably the sixth, fifth quickest driver on the grid. You're probably going to take those guys over thirty-four laps. Just calm down. Yeah. But I don't know. It's difficult to to judge. I think he, in his heart of hearts, he feels like he should be in the top three or four. So he drives like that from from moment one. Maybe that's a leak. But I don't know. There's not there's not really much to take from the race, really. Um, I don't think anyone had a particularly exciting race. Yeah. Which is nice. Well, you don't always get these incredible races where everyone's got the position they wanted and it's been this incredible battle so you always get a few races which are not quite as interesting but points are points for those of the drivers who got points but it was good for D2 because there weren't that many mistakes other than Stein clattering Halev yeah other than that I didn't see anything that was anything contentious so it's actually nice for us because Canada Usually it's like the opposite. <laughs> Canada looked like Mario Kart. That's what Canada looked like. <laughs> so we, we've redeemed ourselves slightly, but Austria's up, mate. Well, so, talking about yeah. Austria, um, we have missed this out in Division 1, but we'll do both divisions now. It's time to make some predictions, as always, and I completely forgot to tally up our previous results so i still don't know who's the best at predicting what will happen but um oh well i guess we'll do d1 first so for d1 on the podium come tomorrow i'm gonna predict provided he doesn't lag michael will win second Mm. place will be decky and third place will be Falcon. Okay. I'm going to go for Decky in first. I will say Falcon in second and Rick in third. Oh, Rick on the podium again. But I've got a little uh, little special edition for us all, which is Gary, because he gave me his predictions earlier. Okay. We've got Decky in first for, for Gary, uh, Falcon in second, Mitch third, uh, Gary in fourth, and Rick in fifth. Ooh, okay. So Sauber really backing themselves for this track. I, oh, actually, I can tell you Rick's not racing, so you might want to change your prediction. Um, he's oh, actually he at the Spanish Grand Prix. He didn't actually tell me about fourth and fifth, but I just actually threw you it. You just made it up. <laughs> in the top three, you can deck your fucking <laughs> Fair enough. But he does think he's wrapped around it. Well, it's time trial time good. suggests that as well. So um, time to put the racetrack position where his time trial position is. Um, that'd be interesting to see. 
But I guess that brings us on to our D2 predictions. I think I can make a good prediction here. For once, I'm going to go first. I don't need to, you to set the target. I Ooh. hope you don't mind me saying, but I'm going to say you for the win. Um, I feel like you've got enough confidence, whether it's placed correctly or not, you've got enough confidence that you won't bottle it. Whereas as I've, I, I'm one of these drivers who, as much as he has a lot of confidence, when it comes to the race, that confidence just drops and the bottling just comes out. But I feel like you've got what it takes to not bottle it. So I'm going to put you on for the win. Um, V5 looks rapid. Um, I've been messaging him a little, so I know the times that he's been doing. I'm not sure if he's been telling anyone else, but I'm going to put him for second. Um, I think it'll be close between you two. And then third... I'm going to put Waluigi. He seems really into the league. Uh, I'm not sure how much he's practiced, f practiced for this race, but he always seems to be around that position. So, yeah. Yeah. Oh, wow. As if you put me first. Wow. Should That's be honoured. <laughs> no, I am. I don't know um, My predictions are slightly different, but V5 is quicker than me around here. Um, okay. Not by much, but in race we're very similar. But I, I suspect over one lap he'll beat me. Um, the unknown quantities are, are, are probably Switch and and Tigaby. I would say if I had to put my life on it, I'd put V5 first, Switch second, me third. Um, okay. I don't know why I'm quick round here. I practice it loads. But nah, fair. Alright. Look forward to seeing you on the podium uh, tomorrow. Obviously, D2 has full wow. quality, so it'll be interesting to see how that pans out. But yeah, I think that rounds off the podcast this week. Um, it's been a bit of a different one um, with only me and Mark, but obviously, I've enjoyed it as always. I hope you have, Mark. So yeah, I wish everyone the best. Hope they get what they want in Austria. And yeah, I guess we'll see you all next week for the podcast. Cheers.